Good evening po, Pastor Mike. Good evening po. Pastor Mike. Good evening po, Pastor. Hello to everybody. Good evening. Thank you ulit, Pastor, for uh, sa pagpapaunlak ng aming invitation. <laughs> How are you doing? 
Mabuti po, Pastor. Medyo base po sa kwento nyo. Eh. Mukhang mas maluwag po sa amin ng konti. <laughs> yeah. Kami medyo ano pa. Medyo restricted pa. Mm. Wow. O nga po yung 5P. Pastor? 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 Mabuti naman po. Andito po pastor ngayon sa home is yung mga kids and yung mga um, pastors po natin and mga staff. That's good. It's good to see everyone. Oh guys, say say something. Go to pastor. <laughs> How is the the sound? Is it clear? Yes po. Okay. <clears throat> pag kasi nyer, pag nag-share ba ako sa screen, nawawala yung picture ko? Um, Pastor, uh, pwede po natin i-check, Pastor. I think mag-stay po yung nasa taas. Makikita pa rin po kayo, Pastor. Parang sa thumbnail, magiging thumbnail na lang po. Uh, okay. Kasi hindi ko natatrack yung ano eh. Uh, yung yung shared screen hindi ko makikita siya eh. Mm. Hindi makikita ko yung sinishare ko pero hindi ko nakikita po. How does it appear to you? Pwede ko Okay. Apo. Sarado na lang ako. So how do you conduct your Bible study usually? Is it in interactive or Something else. Um, sigur, Pastor. Um, usually po we open in prayer. Tapos siguro po yung mga joining from other churches. I can briefly um enumerate or list down kung sino sino po yung mga nandito and where they're from. And then um the rest of the time po will be given to you, Pastor. And then siguro after your um teaching po sa sa end part. Maybe we can ask them if meron po silang any question na gusto po nila i if, if, if that's okay, Pastor, and then we close in prayer. Hmm. Okay. It's fine. So how long do you usually have your Bible study? Um, usually for 30 to 40 minutes. Max one, max, one. max one hour po, Pastor. Okay. Apo. Just to, just to keep track on your time. Apo. <laughs> so, Pastor, pwede na po siguro tayo mag-start if you're ready na po. I will ask a Pastor Jimber to open us in prayer. Amen. Okay, praise God. Okay, tayo po tayong lahat and let us start. Uh, kahit dito lang po sa home, you can sit down lang po. Nagalood ka na tanok na Diyos, hagyaman kami ti kahit ko'y narabi. Hagyaman kami ti panangaramat mo iti may sang habanag tap nagmay may sa kami manipot iti kahit ko'y narunan iti pagdana. At kararag ni ngaroon na po iti panorsulong may suka di iti may talimong iti puso iti tumunggal may sa kanakang. At agyaman kami matapon naman pa'y adayo o Diyos si Aramatang nung amumi nga asilid ka ka na kami. At si Kakadyo Diyos iti mangiwanaman manipod ka na iti saong tibiyag ito mong galmaysa. At may tila ito'y nga rabi kumanay manang na makapnag itibiyag ti maysa ka na maysa ka na. Tarabayon na ito'y narangit ka pindisyonan at agpalin may sunga makapnag iti kabibiyag iti maysa nga ta. Talot mikin ka na si Kakadyo iti makibalay Imbitaran ni Kalili na Santon ng Espiritu, ay so ito mang suro si Jesus, itibiyag mo yung tilaituin na rabi. Aramatan ka rin, itadipon mo akas instrumentong isa mo anay. At puray pa'y nagitag dengag, anyaman abanan, pabawin ka rin ito sa on, may talimang na ka rin, itibiyag ito mong dalumay sa mga. Nagsakan mi, kat makipag-anda ka ka rin, tilaituin na rabi, puray pa'y di pa naglagpas na, at si Kaki may dayaw, may tanok, Kaya ito'y tikararag, may tinapatag, manangad ni si Kristo nga po, may. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. So, bago ko ibigay yung time kay Pastor, uh, gusto ko lang magsabi ng uh, brief, brief introduction what I know about him. So, uh, si Pastor Michael is our pastor sa um, uh, Word of Life Christian Church. Tama po ba, Pastor? So, sa Australia. Yeah. Shy based sa Australia. And uh, from Australia si Pastor, pero na-meet ko siya sa New York, year 2017. And uh, um, uh, uh, married siya kay, na- kay uh, Nanay Zelda. We, 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 we call her uh, Mom Z. Ayan. So na-meet na natin si, 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 Ma- si Mom Zelda, no? kung natatandaan nyo. Nag- nag- nag-exert siya sa inyo sa devotion. And uh, they also visited us here, ministering to some of our churches dito sa Tarlac. And uh, their life is really a blessing. Ang uh, hindi ko makalimutan kay Pastor, whenever we meet, nag-meet kami sa New York, nag-meet kami dito, sobrang lagi kaming merong kwentuhan na more than one hour kasi grabe yung testimony ni Pastor. Um, uh, narinig ko yung testimony niya sa New York about sa Jeda, So, very encouraging papano sila nakarating sa Australia. So, siguro may, maganda rin one time mapag, mapagkwentuhan natin yon. And then, also um, na Um, kung paano nag-start yung church nila sa Australia. It's all it's always a blessing to sit with pastor and talagang madami kang matututunan and very encouraging. And so, uh, we are so glad, pastor, for this uh, moment na pinagkalob niyo po sa amin. Um, also po, joining us today is yung mga leaders po from Benguet and Tarlac. So, ayan po, sina Ed, sina Ed Mark, sina Ronaline, and Johanna. So, ayun, Pastor, once again, thank you so much po, and I am giving the rest of the time sa inyo po. Kung si Lord. Yeah. I thank you very much, uh, Sister Mona, and the entire True Vine Christian Fellowship. Uh, it's a joy for us, uh, especially me as <clears throat> being invited to again to your homes. Or to your spiritual home, Jen Satarlak, <laughs> and just bear with my voice because I may jo nagbabago yung panahon dito. Jo na mao sa kung konte. Season ngayon jan pastor. Ah, it's turning spring and biglang lumamig na naman for the last two days. Kaya may jo nag bago yung boses. Uh-huh. <laughs> praise God, I'm still able to share a few things na request ni Sister Mona. Amen. And I, I pray that uh, what we are going to discuss is <clears throat> uh, being totally thought true, no? mapag-isip-isipan ng bawat isa, especially sa, sa ating mga Christian Uh, leaders, pastors, and also members. Na sometimes uh, hindi hindi klaro sa maraming Kristiano ang patungkol sa uh, spiritual covering ng ating topic. But actually, the, the 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 study that I prepared is entitled the uh, legitimate authority in spiritual covering. Ano ba? It is the legitimate authority in spiritual covering. So I would like you to know, nakikita niyo ba sa screen? Yes, yes po, Pastor. So, uh, binigyan ko ng emphasis dyan yung salitang legitimate. Mm. But first and foremost, this is what we can understand that uh, This uh, understanding is uh, founded in these uh, few um, foundational scriptures that tells us or teaches us that God is the sovereign possessor of absolute power and authority that provides spiritual covering. Yan yung ultimate. Yan yung absolute. That if we ask is there really a biblical foundation for spiritual covering? Well, the, in, in one statement, 
we have we all have to recognize that God is the sovereign possessor of absolute power and authority that provides spiritual covering. First Corinthians fifteen twenty seven says, "For he has put all things in subjection under his feet." But when he says all things are put in subjection, it is evident that he is accepted who put all things in subjection to him. Meaning God is outside of that. God is, uh, uh, he is the possessor, he is the sovereign power. We is separated from uh, all his creation that is under his spiritual covering. And also in the book of Matthew 28, 18, which is the declaration of the Gospels concerning the Lord Jesus, and when Jesus came up and spoke to them, he said these words, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So this is when the Lord Jesus was on earth. We understand that perfectly through the Gospels, right? that he, he manifested himself in human form. But there he declared that all authority has given unto me in heaven and on earth. In, in a simple tra translation, I am in charge of all things. So to be clear, that the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the second person of the Divine Trinity, uh, has also of absolute power and authority that provides spiritual covering on everything, both in heaven and on earth. The next thing is that we have to understand the importance why he has to emphasize that he has the absolute power and authority for spiritual covering simply because in man's in man's standing man has lost a spiritual covering from the very beginning of time of age Genesis 3, 7, pertaining to Adam and Eve, if you remember. That's why I put, I, I, I would put, I would like to bring this back to the very first human pair. It says in Genesis 3, 7 that then their eyes, of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. Sabihin wala silang covering. They begin to recognize that they do not have any more covering. And they sewed pig lips together and made themselves a loin coverings. So nagkaroon sila ng idea na magkaroon sila ng man-made covering. The question is why? I want to ask you why. Why, why would they see themselves to be naked after they fall? After they fall. Where in fact from the very start of the created, uh, when they were created by God, they do not really have any clothing at all. But they do not recognize that they were naked. It seems like that, that to, the, to them, to that at that point, there's no issue about their uh, human uh, uh, body. Question is, big question is why? How is that how, how how does that become possible? So, a covering is not simply a a physical covering. That's why I said a spiritual covering. There is a spiritual covering. in spite of that they don't have a physical dress or clothing to wear but they do not recognize that until they 
fall into sin. So something has changed. Something was taken away from them. Something that they lost when they begin to see themselves that they recognize that they were naked. Hindi ba nakakapagtaka naman yun? Eh dati naman silang nakahubad and then wala naman silang issue nung sila na ginawa ng just na nakahubad. Why? Even if they are physically naked, they are still spiritually covered. Can you can we understand that? There is a spiritual covering over them that is uh, uh, clothing them that because it is God who is has the absolute power and authority that provides covering spiritually to these two individuals. If they are and, you know, if they are under the covering of God, there is no issue. There is no anything at all because as long as that covering is still intact. So this is where we recognize that there is a loss of even from the time of Adam and Eve who lose their spiritual covering because of sin when they rebelled against God. When they believed the, the word of the devil. By their nakedness because of the loss of spiritual covering, God has to provide for them a temporary physical covering so that he could deal with the problem of their spirituality. This is where it all began. So spiritual covering, sometimes some people do not recognize that. Some people, maybe some Christians do not even believe that they need spiritual covering. But here is a clear, a clear indication in the first human pair that they lost something. Actually, what we have learned in other studies, when they were still naked during when they were under in their first creation, when they, they do not have any issue, there is no shame, there is no fear. Okay, they were still physically naked, but they uh, they don't feel states of God that has been wrapped all around their being. The glory of God covers the That, amen. Can you say amen to that? Sin is falling short of the glory of God. Means It means that if they are now in sin, they fall short of that glory. Meaning the glory is, has departed. The glory of God departed from this human pair. So we understand that spiritual covering is so... So uh, let us see another example. Isaiah 30 verse 1. Woe to the rebellious sons, says Jehovah. Who make advice but not of me, and who cover with a covering but not of my spirit, that they add sin to sin. See the one. And during the time of Isaiah, even the people of God became rebellious, 
and they they devise coverings a kind of covering but it's not from the spirit it is not a spiritual covering and what they are really doing is just they add sin to their sin so that is what i call illegitimate covering so today what what we can recognize is this there is a legitimate covering there is also illegitimate covering that's why the title of our study a brief study is legitimate authority in spiritual covering i would like to make that very clear we are not simply talking about a uh, spiritual covering of uh, uh, of men, yung device, yung katulad ng ginagawa ng mga tao sa panahon ni Isaiah, that they have a covering, a covering that is not of the, as there is a legitimate means, legitimate spiritual covering means being submitted and in obedience to legitimate authority of a person who is subjected under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So I would like you to note that carefully. Because for a person who has been appointed or ordained by God, then he possesses a legitimate authority. And these are the people that you can be is subjected to under a legitimate spiritual covering only. Amen? Legitimate subjected no, that person must be subjected under the Lordship of Christ to become legitimate. If they are not subjected to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, they also become illegitimate uh, authority. So we have to uh, make that clearly. Because these people are being given a spiritual authority, which is a divinely authorized right and responsibility delegated to believers to act on God's behalf in spiritually ruling his creation under the Lordship of Christ Jesus. And that is a quote from Dr. Tony Evans. Spiritual authority is a divinely, meaning from God, divinely authorized right and responsibility delegated to believers to act on God's behalf uh, so that we can spiritually rule his creation under the lordship of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Here is another scripture that I would like us to see together. Yes. The perfect submission of Jesus Christ to the Father. John 5 verse 19. It says, So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. We are talking about the Lord Jesus Christ in Roman. that even the Lord Jesus Christ is subjected, put himself under subjection to the authority of his father. And he doesn't do anything that the father do, do not warrant, that the father do not approve. Whatever the Lord Jesus will do, he said, he will only do what his father is doing. This is a perfect example, a perfect submission of a person to the authority of another person. Amen? It was, it was exemplified by the Lord himself. So here is my question. If the Lord Jesus is able to subject himself to another person, is there really a big question for, for Christians like us not to be? 
You see, when Jesus in his humanity operated not by virtue of deity, but by the virtue of his submission to his Father. Even though that he is God in human flesh, he is not operating by the virtue of his deity. He is operating in his earthly life by virtue of his submission. By submission to his Father. You see, that is a, a, a clear uh, example of the Lord Jesus. And that is why the Father said, I am so pleased to, this, to, to my son. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Um, I, he is recognizing yung, yung submission nitong kanyang anak, na bugtong na anak, sa kanya bilang ama. And, and so, Matthew 28 is now becoming more clearly when Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me by my Father. Did you see yung, how, how the Father could share authority, the absolute authority ng, ng Ama, has been granted to the Son? So here is a, a, another clear idea that we can uh, learn from uh, legitimate authority and spiritual covering. This is a blessing for uh, from God if we if we find ourselves to be in perfect submission to the authority that is over us. The authority over us is willing to share the authority to you as well. Wow, amen. But if you can do that is above you, they will never share anything to you. Mm. Mm. And that is sometimes the big problem in, in churches. That's a big problem in ministry. When we do not understand that spiritual covering is a great impact, into the lives of many believers. Amen. Just in terms of submission, we think that it is no big deal. Well, that's why I pull out a few scriptures which are more challenging because this scripture is talking about God himself showing us a clear picture and how we can be like Christ. If I ask every Christian, do you like to become like Christ? They will say yes, amen. But if, I, if you ask them to submit according to the submission of Christ, then there becomes a problem. <laughs> that is where we, we, we see the problem. Amen. Yeah? Because they can, we cannot follow yung submission na in, a, in exemplify ng Panginoon. And they would, want, they would like to rule with him. Mm -hmm. So to me, to me, it doesn't connect. There is a, a detach. There is a detachment between authority and covering. Then we have to see this clearly. Wow. Well, there is detachment. In church, must submission. Here are just a few. The right motivation for, uh, for submission is we have to recognize first and foremost that God is, is the one in authority. Romans 13. One. It is God's authority that requires us to submit to authority. That is God's authority. We also recognize to have reverence for Christ is a good motivation for submitting to authority. If we revere Christ, then we will be able to submit. Because Christ submitted himself. Another one is in 1 Corinthians 15, 28. You have to clothe yourself in love. Now, these are spiritual covering. This is, we're not talking about Giordano. We're not talking about uh, Calvin Klein. 
we're not talking about uh, mga, mga branded shirt or clothing. We're talking about spiritual covering. You have to clothe yourself in love in 1 Corinthians 15, 28. You have to clothe yourself in humility in 1 Peter 5, 5. And another motivation is that it is the leader's responsibility and accountability. That's why we have to submit to their authority. They are responsible leaders and they are accountable leaders to God. According to Hebrews 13.7. And we are also encouraged that we have to be submissive to the leaders so that their ministry will be joyful to them. Para hindi laging nakasimangot si leader o nakasimangot yung pastor na natin. <laughs> Hebrews 13.17 Make their ministry worth doing na nagagalak sila sa, sa mga nakikita nilang mga uh, members ng church o mga disciples. So here is a scripture that we would like to <clears throat> to see once more in Romans 13 1 and 2 it says very clearly according to Paul the apostle every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God and those which exist are established by God Therefore, whoever receives authority has opposed the ordinance of God and they who have opposed will re receive condemnation upon themselves. Whoa, that is a strong warning. And the I know that not every person is, can, uh, is happy with this, especially non-believers. They do not recognize this. But let us just take the context of the church because this word was given to the, to the Romans. This is given to the believers. So let us set aside first the non-believers. Let us talk about the believers like us, the Christians like us. Sabi ni Paul eh, sa, this, is, this is a book of Romans, so meaning he is addressing this to Christians in Rome. Yeah? He's not talking about unbelievers, he's not talking, talking about uh, the pagans, or the, he's not talking about those people, he's talking about to the church. He said, every person in the church, he said, is to be in subjection to governing authorities. Look at that, governing authorities, plural. Marami yan, iba-ibang klase, iba-ibang uri. For there is no authority, sabi niya, except from God. So lahat pala ito galing sa Diyos. Those that exist, the authority that exists in your church, were established by God, according to Paul. And therefore, whoever receives authority has opposed not just the authority, but the ordinance of God. And they who oppose will receive condemnation upon themselves. So here is a, a, a word that I just put under this one concerning submission to governing authority. To all Christians, you can either submit to the governing authority voluntarily or if you like, it will be mandatorily. Which one would you like? Voluntarily or mandatorily? Alam niyo ba yung mandatory obedience? Ayaw ko, kung ako tatanungin nyo, I don't like mandatory obedience because mandatory obedience is something like this one. Uh, you know, in the house of God, uh, there are, to me, uh, that the way I see it, uh, in the house of God, there are uh, living, uh, seemingly, that they are 
part of the kingdom of God, but they behave different uh, different uh, attitudes. Some Christians voluntarily submit, but some Christians you need to. It's like kailangan persay mo pa or ito to coerce o takutin. Yung ano yun? Ano yun? Ano yun? Kailangan uh, kung hindi pa kumagan sa magulang tsaka anak kung hindi pa nagalit yung magulang at nag-alsa ng boses yung magulang hindi susunod yung anak. Kumbaga parang persa ba? That is mandatory kasi mandatory <laughs> yung power and authority ng magulang iba naman yun eh di ba? Iba ang if you are under the covering of your parents. Siyempre, kung di ka susunod sa magulang mo, then may mandatory ano yan. Another mandatory obedience. Let's say, for example, government, human government. Okay, let's put it in our current context. Oh, merong may gobyerno itinilaga ang Diyos. And then, Some people voluntarily obey the government. And some people are not uh, convenient to obey the government. So ano magiging mangyayari? May mandatory anong gobyerno, so map- sapilitan yun. Di ba? Kumisang kailangan pa nila ng military para lang ipa- patupad yung authority na ini-impose nila. Why? Because we find it hard to submit voluntarily. Pero regardless of your position, kung may authority na nilagay Diyos doon, dalawa lang yan, either mandatorily o voluntary. Mamili lang tayo kung saan natin gusto lumagay sa submission. Kasi beyond these two, kung ayaw mo ng voluntary, ayaw mo rin ng mandatory, isa lang ang kauwihan mo, rebellion. Yun na yun. Yung, kasi either of the two lang na pwede sumunod eh. Pwede sa pilitan ng pagsunod, yeah, pag-submit, o voluntary talaga na nag-submit, kung parehong ayaw niya mag-submit, magre-rebel lang siya. Yun ang nagiging isang malaking problema ko minsan sa ministry. Kaya kung minsan sa ministry, merong break away, merong, di ba? Kasi hindi na pwedeng mag-submit. Ayaw ng voluntary, ayaw ng mandatory. No, stop it, Elan. Okay. I said stop it. Let us see some biblical submission uh, points in the church. As we already said that one of the biblical submission in the church is this one, motivated by love and a desire to understand and cooperate. So every Christian must be motivated by love and have a desire to understand and cooperate. Another is leadership encourages diversity and ensures that people feel safe to be themselves and use their gifts. This is where your spiritual gift becomes to flourish because if there is a, a legitimate authority that governs you, they will help you to, to develop and to rise up even in, the, <clears throat> even in the position of leadership in the future. And if you are now in the same uh, position, maybe you are now in the leadership, So maybe you are the one in authority. Then leadership encourages diversity. So this is this plays both ways for the people in authority and the people who are subjected to authority. Another thing is that leadership is truly accountable because people are free to ask questions in an accepting and safe environment. Kasi kung tama yung leadership, uh, legitimate yung leadership, they do not mind to be questioned by people under them. 
as long as that even the people under them are also accepting and uh, you know recognizing kasi sa ating kalagayan even people in leadership there we do not have perfect leadership you have to understand that merong mga flaws merong mga ano imperfections isa lang ang perfecto ng perfect leadership na meron tayo ito ano lang yun but nevertheless leadership that's why leadership must be truly accountable kailangan maging account sinabi rin niya na, na makikita natin mamaya yan another motivation here is the a biblical example unity through mutual love sacrifice and understanding so these few points na hopefully will give us some clarity concerning our submission in the church biblical submission ng mga members ng church biblical submission din ng mga uh, pastors and leaders sa church now we have to also to touch briefly because we most of our biblical references are founded in the new testament i would like to bring some uh, theological points concerning uh, the word submit subjection or obedience or obey in the new testament there are actually six greek words that with their perspective and understanding about submission about subjection about spiritual covering okay, so you have to uh, if you can take note on this maybe you, since you have a recording anyway you can go back and look into these few words so i labor a little bit about these words because uh, one of the good thing about bible study is that we have to understand it in the proper context amen because the word submit subjection obey have different meanings in english and more so there are even in the greek text the original original uh, text where the new testament was written so, so greek terms they have six greek words na ginagamit pertaining to this uh, uh, matter sub submission Num of giving in cooperating assuming responsibility and carrying a burden yan yung hupostaso now hupostaso does not convey a sense of involuntary obedience take note it is not uh, teaching any sense of involuntary it's always voluntary it is not involuntary obedience to human command or authority in the new testament so when you when we see this one we will see this uh, more clearly later i'm just enumerating the six quickly secondly is the we call pi tart eo meaning a basic definition is to obey authority yan ang makikita natin sa greek text Aside from that, hindi na ginagamit yung word na iba. May iba-iba siyang application. The third word is paito, meaning to persuade and to have confidence or to obey. So, three words na yan. Here, here are the, the next three words. The, <clears throat> the fourth word is hook eco meaning to retire withdraw or submit and the fifth word is dogmas dogmatizo to decree to subject oneself to an ordinance submit to decrees yan ang ibig sabihin niyan and the last term na ginagamit ng uh, new testament bible in greek is this one hupakuo 
Meaning, to listen, attend to, answer, became obedient, becoming obedient, heed, obedient, obey, and obey. These are the basic. This is the entire. When you see the Bible, kasi sa ating uh, Biblia, nakikita lang natin, English term, submit, obey, obey, you know, ano, ano, ano. But you don't even bother to look into the terms how the, the Greek Uh, language uses the term. Importante ito sa <clears throat> proper exegesis ng text. Kaya nilagay ko ito dahil importante ito lalo na sa mga ating mga pastors that we cannot just simply use uh, words that is out of the context of the scripture. Now we will give, we will give a few clear uh, biblical uh, verses sa New Testament Uh, some referencing dito sa mga anim na ito. Here is the first. Because the most common or the most term na ginagamit mostly sa term ng submission and, and submit or obey is the term hupotazo. Mas maraming ginamit ito sa New Testament. Here are the, which is the meaning na, na Binanggit ko kanina, ano? This is a voluntary attitude in giving in or submission, which is cooperating and assuming responsibility and carrying a burden. Now, here are the scriptures that use this word hupotazo. Romans 13:1. Ang sabi ng Romans 13:1, every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those which exist are established by God. Romans 13.1 So if you would read this in the Greek text, ang sinasabi dyan, every person is to be in huputazo. Meaning, ibig sabihin, lahat ng tao dyan sa church, sabi ni Paul, dyan sa, sa inyong church, dyan sa Rome, sabi niyo din sa mga kapatiran niya sa mga Christians, kanila, sila ay dapat may voluntary attitude in submission na nakikipag-cooperate sila and that they know how to assume the responsibility and to carry the burden. That is the context na sinasabi ni Paul doon sa mga Romans. Because sabi niya, bakit kailangan yung gawin yun? Kasi there is no authority that is not coming from God. If you recognize God, this, this should be your attitude. Sabi niya sa mga tiga Roma. Another scripture, uh, yung letter niya kay Titus. This is another church uh, which is led by Titus. Uh, Ro- uh, Titus 2, verse 9 and 10. It says, Band servants are to be submissive. Meaning, are to be Hupotazo to their own masters in everything. They are to be well-pleasing, not argumentative, not filtering, but showing all good faith so that in everything they may be adorned the doctrine of God our Savior. Pumili lang ako ng dalawa muna kasi napakaraming example sa hupotazo na term. Andiyan sa baba, Like Luke 10.17, Hebrews 12.9, 1 Corinthians 15, 16, Ephesians 5, Colossians 3, Titus 3, 1 Peter, tatlo yan, and James 4.7. But for this one, if I have more time, I would, I would love to read through every scripture that talks about voluntary submission with cooperating, assuming responsibility that carries a burden. You know what? If this is the kind of people under your ministry, oh, you are a very happy pastor. <laughs> Amen. If these are the kind of people that you are working with in the ministry, you are a very flourishing ministry. I tell you now. <laughs> if they know how to hupotazo. Amen. <laughs> 
because uh, if they are uh, they understood clearly that they are supposed to be spiritually covered with hupotazo amen so this uh, maybe this is the first time that you might be hearing these uh, terms as so i would like really to encourage you to look into this closely here is another example that we have just mentioned the second word patarcheo meaning to obey authority this is where we see peter and the other apostles when they were arrested in acts 5:29 when they answered and said, we must obey God rather than men. They did not use hupotazo, they used petarchio. So may, may pinagkakaiba yung dalawa, hindi ba? Dito sa context na to, the apostles cannot obey the governing authority. And the question is, why? Sabi niya, sabi kasi nila, we must obey God rather than you. <laughs> then there is a legitimate reason why they cannot. And, and, and if you have read this account, you have, you must have understood that uh, what the authority, these are the people in authority who is forbidding them to, uh, to, to speak ab about Jesus in public. This is the, uh, the this is supposed to be a authority, but they are this authority are practicing illegitimate authority over them, and that is why they sabi nila, uh, we would rather obey God. We have to obey the authority of God rather than your authority. So they obey they obey higher authority than the authority that they are imposing on them which is a illegitimate authority as they see it. Acts 5.32 And we are witnesses of these things and so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey Him. You see this one? It, they, the, the people who are in subjection in proper legitimate authority who are obedient to authority, the authority of God, they receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. Titus 3, verse 1 and 2. Remind them to be subject to rulers, to authorities, to be obedient, to be ready for every good deed, not to malign anyone, but to be peaceable, gentle, showing every consideration for all men. So that is in Titus 3, 1 and 2. So just getting on, moving on quickly. The third, it is a, the third word is, this Hebrews 13, 7 combines the two words that na, we mentioned ko kanina. Yung paito, tsaka yupiko. So this word, these two words, we can see it, yung, the word obey, which is paito, Obey your leaders and submit, which is hupiko, to them, for they are keeping what's over your souls as those who will give account. Let them do this with joy, not to be with groaning, for that would not be advantage to you. So in this verse alone, it shows two Greek terms concerning obedience and submission. Magkayawalay sila. And this is the only uh, New Testament scripture that shows the combination of the two different terms, but talking onto the same essence of submission, obedience and submission. Another word, uh, example, this is the, what the term dogmatizo, which means to decree, to subject oneself to an ordinance, or to submit to decrees. Colossians 2, 20-21, it says, If you have died with Christ to the elementary principles of the world, why, as if you were living in the world, do you submit yourself to decrees such as do not handle, do not taste, and do not touch? If you understand the context of this, this is a kind of uh, sub submission that is not supposed to be happening anymore to Christians who have been uh, freed by Christ. 
that's why it called dogmatizo. Uh, pagka naririnig niyo yung salitang dogmatic, I don't know if we understand that perfectly. I, I presume you have heard it once or twice. Uh, you are so dogmatic. You know, to be dogmatic is to be to adhere oneself to some ordinance or rules and to submit unto that. But here is a negative, this is a negative connotation that Apostle Paul is admonishing the Colossian church, the Colossian Christians, that he said that Christ died for you already, that you should be dead to the elementary principles of the world. And so why is it that you are still like you are living in the world, that you submit, meaning submit to be dogmatizo to your uh, to decrees such as do not handle that and do not taste and do not touch. So it's like, you are being restricting yourself in a wrong way when you say dogmatizo. Last but not the least, yung hupukuo, meaning to listen, attend to, answer, became obedient, and so on. This is where we see Ephesians 6.1. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So I know you have read that before. Yung mga anak daw, maging masunurin kayo sa inyong mga magulang sa Panginoon. Amen? The same as Ephesians 6, 5 to 6, meaning his, the words, both Paul is the writer to the Ephesian church. Slaves, he said, be obedient to those who are, who are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in the sincerity of your heart as to Christ. Not by way of eye service as men pleasers, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. So on these two examples, to the writings of Paul, he uses upakuo. Uh, I, I just want you to note that naglagay lang ako ng insert uh, aking... Uh, identification dito sa scripture na to, like the children, I just wrote a word, technon. That is the translation of this word, children, for you to know. And dito sa Ephesians 6, 5 and 6, the word doulos is the translation in Greek of slaves. Uh, I put this uh, Intentionally, I put this because uh, if if, I, if we could have time, that we can ex, uh, explain why there are these terms are very important. If we will cite a, a clear example about obedience and submission and authority, there are certain accounts in the gospel that we can see this more clearly. But we do not have that luxury of time. So, just take note on that. Now, here. I want us to note a few points after the six words that we just briefly discussed in the Greek text. To exercise legitimate authority over those who are under you. Meaning, yung mga, for example, yung pastors or leaders na may authority at meron silang mga subordinates. Uh, and members under them. To exercise legitimate authority over those who are under you, you must learn to recognize and submit to the authority that is above you. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Let me repeat it. To exercise legitimate authority. We're talking about exercising legitimate authority. Over those who are under you, you must learn to recognize uh, and submit to the authority that is above you. Because every one of us mm. has an authority over us. That is for sure. So, for, for example, if I am a person in authority and we, I have a lot of people under me, and I do not submit to the authority of, that is above me, 
I am no longer exercising a legitimate authority. That becomes illegitimate. Amen? If I do not recognize and, and I do not submit to the authority that is above me, then I will fall under an illegitimate exercise of authority. That, be, that, will, be, that will create a problem. Mm -hmm. That will truly create a problem. That is why there's a lot of problematic church. Mm -hmm. Because it's either the people under you do not submit, or maybe the leader also falls short of submission himself. Let us see this scripture. Let us learn from the story of the centurion who exercised legitimate authority. In 7.4, when he came to Jesus and they pleaded with them earnestly, uh, some, some people went to Jesus and pleaded with him earnestly saying, he is worthy, you have to do this for him. They are referring to the centurion. The people said, the centurion is worthy. And Jesus went with them, and he, when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you under my roof. So the centurion said, do not come under my roof anymore, Lord. Look at this word. Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you under my roof. Look at legitimate exercise of authority is always accompanied with humility. This is clear, this clearly the centurion as a person in authority. This is a Roman centurion, remember? So, but the way he shows himself of, about, uh, uh, about the Lord Jesus, he recognizes Jesus to be an authority above him. And even in his own understanding, Jesus is a Jew. So he's supposed to be under him. He's supposed to is it not? Normally, because the Jewish, the Jewish community is under the rulership of the Roman government during the time. But why is it, the question, why is it that this soldier, a centurion, who is an officer, is able to say, do not come under my roof anymore, Lord. He, he even called him Lord. Do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Meaning, he, he, he recognizes the authority that Jesus had. Here is a further word that he said. Sabi ng centurion, For I too am a man set under authority, with soldiers under me. You see? And I say, this union can exercise legitimate authority. So, legitimate exercise of authority is fully operational when the higher authority has granted it. This centurion exactly knows that the flow of submission and authority and delegation and whatever, and it becomes operational in under his command when he gives it when he grants the authority like he approves it <clears throat> let us go to briefly to the apostles legitimate exercise of authority Luke 9 verse 1 and 2 the Lord Jesus called his 12 disciples together and says, he gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases and sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God to heal. And just in this text alone, that Jesus gave you authority and power to subdue every illegitimate power and authority that would try to dominate you. This is like reason why God gave power and authority to certain people. What is the purpose? The purpose is to subdue illegitimate authority that tries to dominate the lives of people around you. So responsibility ito ng mga people in authority. Amen? 
Now, if they are people in authority, I have also seen that these people whom Jesus gave authority to, the, the, the apostles, and even the 70 disciples, and I have learned that even demon spirits are submissive to them. That's, that's a, a big wow. <laughs> wow. When yung mga demon, yung mga demonic spirit na marunong mag-submit. <laughs> wow. When they exercise a legitimate authority, the demonic spirit will submissive to them according to the scripture. Kumisa, mas maganda pa yung uh, asunorin yung demonyo kesa doon sa mga ibang kristyano. <laughs> Yeah, di ba? Misa mas mal magkataka ka bakit kung misa ang hirap pasunurin ng ibang Christian. <laughs> eh, yung mga demonyo ang dali-dali pa sunurin. <laughs> Sabi doon tuwa-tuwa eh. If you re read that carefully, the 70 disciples were granted authority and they said, "Lord, Lord." They were so happy they came back to the Lord Jesus and said, "Even the demons obey us under your name." Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> we are coming to a briefly close. Huh? Amen. I just want to make it really short because we do not have the luxury of time, really. Here is another scripture that I would like to think. This is concerning about the family. A legitimate exercise of authority in the family. 1 Corinthians 11.3 But I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. Meaning every husband in the house. He said, your head is Christ. And the head of a wife is her husband. And the head of Christ is God. So every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head. What it means is that if you are putting a illegitimate covering under your head as a man, you are dishonoring your, the Lord. But every wife who prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, o oh, ito naman kabaliktaran, dishonors her head since it is the same as if her head were shaven. This is what we learn about <clears throat> authority and submission in the family unit. Here is a clear picture. There must be a proper alignment which is key to spiritual covering of the legitimate authority. It's like this picture of umbrella. You see, the big umbrella is Christ, and under that big umbrella is direct. The husband is subjected under that big umbrella. And under the umbrella of the husband, the wife is subjected to the umbrella of the husband, and so on, and the children as well underneath the umbrella of the parents. This is a natural order of family. And this doesn't happen without submission and obedience. We already tackled a lot of Greek texts about submission and obedience in different terms. So the only thing that we need to put in place is that there should be a proper alignment which is key to spiritual covering to legitimate authority. We call it legitimate because it is God ordained. This is the way God designed it. Yung covering na yan. Amen. There is a, uh, okay, let me just uh, give another point about this one. Because some problems of the Christian family sometimes is the wife is a Christian and the husband is not. Okay? Sometimes that happens. So that's why there is always a problem in the house when something is not in alignment. Let's say, for example, yung husband, hindi Christian, yung, yung asawa lang niyang babae, yung Christian. And submitted dun sa submitted dun sa kay Jesus yung asawa niyang babae eh hindi naman submitted yung asawang lalaki kay Jesus and then the husband is having problem with his wife sabi niya 
Bakit ikaw ayaw mo sumunod sa sinasabi ko sa iyo? Ano? Nagiging question na po, nag-aaway silang dalawa palagi kasi may issue sila sa submission and obedience. Here is the problem. Ang pag hindi natin naintindihan talaga yung proper alignment. To the, to the husband, let us address this. To the husband, if you want to a, 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 a proper flow of legitimate authority, kailang, pag, pag, pag hindi legitimate yung authority ng lalaki, talagang magkakaproblema siya sa submission ng babae. Dapat tanungin ng lalaki, bakit kaya ayos mag-submit sa akin yung asawa kong babae? Kaya kung asawa. Ang tanong dapat, eh, ganito. Kung isang mali yung tanong eh. Ang dapat ang tanong, do, do I recognize the authority over me so that I could exercise that legitimate authority to those people who are under me? Hindi ba kanina yung definition? Umisa, gusto ng mga asawang lalaki na unbeliever, lahat ng gagawin nila, sasubmit yung asawa. Kahit na hindi na makajos, gusto kasi nila i-exercise lang yung authority. So that's why a big problem. Pag illegitimate yung exercise mo ng authority, you cannot expect a person to submit to illegitimate authority because they are also under the authority of Christ. Naintindihan natin? So, importante yung legitimacy ng ating uh, expression of authority. But if the husband is exercising a legitimate authority even if he is not a believer, well, the wife has to submit to her husband. Kasi legitimate yung exercise. Kasi meron namang way na tama naman yung exercise niya kahit hindi siya believer eh. We could go a lot of clear example on that. Na ordained pa rin ng Diyos. Sinabi nga kanina sa isang example, uh, be submissive to governing authorities even that these authority are not godly. Do you understand that? Kasi meron silang authority to impose yung kanilang rule. But, but according to the, let's say, sa, sa rule na pinaiiral sa batas, for example. Hindi naman taliwas sa rule hindi nga lang sila believer, pero ang pa kanila ipatutupad ay hindi naman mali. Yun ang ibig sabihin. So you have to submit to those authority, even that they are God. Hindi sila Christian authority. Okay. Uh, Amen. Sabi ng Colossians 3.17, Whatever you do in word and deed, And, uh, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Wife, submit. Again, it says there, Huputazo, to your husband, as fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives. This is how you exercise your authority, with love and affection. Do not be harsh with them. Children, obey. Hupukao, ang ginamit dyan, dalawang term yan. Your parents in everything, for it pleases the Lord. And fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Here is the thing that we can learn. Without proper alignment of authority, prayers are hindered, power is not recognized, and victory won't be achieved in spite of prayers being made. According to 1 Peter 3.7. Kasi ang commandment, husbands, live with your wives with an understanding, showing honor to the woman as to the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Hallelujah. That is again under that umbrella. Amen. We are drawing to a close. This is Colossians 3.20. Natouch na rin natin ito kanina. Ang sabi, children, obey your parents in everything for this pleases the Lord. I think the proper alignment of children, when you are under the uh, proper submission to your fa fathers and, and parents, mothers, it will please the Lord. But without proper alignment, it always displeases God. So my question to the group are this one. 
man are you allowing under the Lordship of Christ, first and foremost? Leaders, are you aligned under the Lordship of Christ? Pastors, are you aligned under the Lordship of Christ? These are people who are in authority. To the, we, to the women, like the wife, are you aligned under the, the headship of the husband? To the children, are you aligned under your parents? To the children in the Lord, are you aligned into the, your spiritual parents? Are you aligned under them? Employees, she discovers a whole lot of uh, uh, spheres of the society. Employees, are you serving your employers well? Because your employers are people under who are in authority over you. About the employers, do you use your, your authority legitimately? So basically, do we all recognize the legitimate authority of, in the church? Sometimes there is a, what we hear from Christians that they are committed to the Lord. Your commitment is good, I'm, I should say. But you know what? Jesus doesn't only ask for commitment. What Jesus demands according to his words is our humble submission and obedience to all authorities. All. Amen. And the apostles, the rest of the apostles who like Peter, it is quite clear to me that uh, the legitimate exercise of authority Will, uh, will always give us a spiritual, a legitimate spiritual covering in all of our lives, in all of our uh, ministries, in all of our families. Amen. Amen. Well, this ends briefly, and I will give you a bit of time if you would like to ask questions. Anyone? Mayroon ba kayong question? from our end, sa, sa mga joining po, other leaders sa ibang districts, Benguet, Tarlac, Nevaisiha. Do you have any question? Ang silence means non pastor. <laughs> May naintindihan naman ba? Amen. 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 Hi, Grayson. Hello, po. Good evening. Sure kayo ah, wala na kayong tanong. Wala na daw si Rona. Wala na siyang question. Sure? Mahang they're good pastor. Wala kayo. If you don't have any question, I will ask you a question. <laughs> who among you are people who are in leadership? How many how many people in this uh, gathering? Amen. Isa, Amen. Amen. How many pastors do you live there? Um, dito po sa home. Seven. Seven? Eight. Nine? Nine? Pastor? Ten. Pastor? Nine? 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 Nine po, Pastor. Sa home. Ay, ten po si Mama. Okay. Silipilis pa, 12. 
Eleven. More than ten, Pastor. Okay. The others joining for our leaders po ng uh, district churches po. And how how are the yung inyong mga constituency today? Uh, Bali, how what is the effect ng uh, ng uh, current situations diyan sa Tarlac? Oh, sa current during pandemic po um yes. Yes. Po, we are still submitting po sa um authority ng ng government um good thing po pastor that uh, we are still allowed to gather kasi most of our churches are in the ano po eh ano nga yun um, mountain area hindi po matao so uh, since march po hindi po na stop yung aming mga gawa in most in most churches po but some po in ilocos and the uh, i think benguet and even sa tarlac po other other people were not allowed to really gather for some for some weeks po Pero hindi naman niya daw But you don't have any restrictions sa number of gatherings? Meron po, Pastor. Dapat um, 50%? 50%. Opo. 50% po. Yung iba po ang ginagawa po. Just to, just to maintain the social distancing. Opo, just yes. to maintain social distancing. Yes po, Pastor. That's good. Uh, hopefully, sa amin magbago ng konti uh, by next week. Uh, I think by Sunday, medyo mag-iis ng konti yung restrictions, but still under-restricted pa rin. Mm. But we cannot even gather like even 50 people or wala pa nga sa 20 uh, at the moment close close yung ministry center yung close sa uh, public gathering mm, yeah. uh, yung, yung background ko yan yung yan yung load ng church eh, na vacant uh, nga. ang ganda pa din pastor ng ginawa ni ng bunso mo <laughs> mm. so uh, anyway we utilize uh various uh, ano, ways of doing the ministry but mostly is uh, we record and but we do the live preaching at the ministry center as mm -hmm. i've said earlier uh, five people lang are allowed to stay in the room wow, challenging po. so Pastor, so that we have in the facility every people's uh, media the wow. sometimes dalawang musicians so yun lang and then so, yung... hopefully mag increase uh, sa susunod na mga linggo amen po we will uh, keep you in our prayers then pastor pastor may question daw po si Jezreel uh he is uh, yes, sure in Benguet and he's in Japan ngayon po yeah. Go on, Israel. Thank you. Okay, po ba yung mic ko? Yes, po. Okay. Po, uh, may question po ako, Pastor. Um, mm. About sa uh, alignment of uh, po, no? spiritual alignment. Opo, uh, Pastor. Uh, this is a uh, Malalim na question. Eh, ito po yung pastor. Um, what if God send you a vision through like a yeah, po, vision through dreams and like uh, God is asking you to do this something to do that and 
nakipag speak si God through vision and that on that authority God has given you and you do not para hindi mo po ginawa yung bilin po ng Panginoon mm. uh, what is the implication of that uh, parang pagsuway po or pag hindi pagtong hindi pagtugon sa bilin po ng Panginoon alignment to the authority that God is uh, asking you to do something pero or inutos ang kang gawin yung isang bahay pero hindi mo po ginawa um, mm. what is the implication sa atin pong kristyano pastor kung uh, I mean, ayun po yung question ko sana po nakuha nyo pastor kapag hindi natin sinunod yung eh, ayun po ayun po ayun po Uh, wala bang particular na scenario? Ah, I mean, uh, this is my personal, personal po na ano, na testimony na rin po. Yeah, kasi it, it would be very difficult for me to answer it in a direct form. Kung hindi okay, ko naiintindihan yung konteksto at yung scenario, I might be giving you a different outlook. Okay po, Pastor. You know, you know what I mean? Pero kung okay, for example lang, on, on the basic, on a basic, uh, understanding that it is uh, eh, let's say for example that God is really God who is uh, saying this to you or to a person uh, and giving him a command especially if it, if it is a command you know ang sinabi doon sa pinag-aralan natin kanina you know, if we disobey meron siyang consequences for sure There's always a consequences that that will happen to our disobedience. Bigyan kita ng isang example po sa alin ba sa bu- sa buhay lang ni ano ni, ni Jonah. Okay? Si Jonah, 'di ba, meron din siyang meron siyang panawagan sa Diyos, meron siyang meron siyang tinanggap na mensahe sa Diyos. Then meron pinagawa sa kanya ang Diyos, pero ayaw niyang gawin. The direct direct disobedience do sa authority ah <laughs> o di ba nagkaroon siya ng mga consequences sa sa kanyang journey na pinapupunta siya sa sa Nineve and then he went to Tarsis he went on the other direction meaning kasi ayun niya eh ayun niya talaga yung sundin clearly na talagang dinidisobey niya alam niya rin na Dios yun authority ng Dios yun But what happens is that no matter what we do dun sa story na yun, no matter what Jonah do God will always find a way to to bring him Pin, eh, kaya lang dinanas niya yung mga consequences ng kanyang disobedience sa authority ng Diyos isa yun isa sa mga clear example kaya sinabi kanina din dun sa Uh, tinatch ko ito isa napin ko lang dali ha ito yung Romans 13.1 and 2 yung yung verse 2 nakalagay dun sa Romans 13.2 therefore whoever receives authority you are already opposing the ordinance of God sabi niya and they who have opposed will receive dito ang ginamit na term is condemnation upon themselves ang sinasabi rito ng scripture, uh, God is not condemning them, but you are you are the one who is putting your condemnation upon yourself. Sabi niya, they will receive condemnation upon themselves. Kasi sa, we have to understand that yung authority, if it is being opposed, there is always a, a uh, consequence that really happens, even if God doesn't do anything. Naka, parang ano yan, law yan eh, law. Parang, <laughs> kaya doon kanina nilagay ko doon sa unang-una. Yung unang-unang example lang ha, about the the two individuals, si Adam and Eve. Look at this picture. Look at this clearly. Sila lang ang, sila lang ang tao doon. Wala namang iba ng... <laughs> <laughs> wala nang ibang individual na pwede masisido sa mga nangyari. Dalawa lang sila eh. Amen? 
So very very narrow yung ano picture, very chaka very clear. So they both are an they have a, a spiritual covering, they have a protection of God, they have enjoyed the benefits of being under the care of God. For but just one thing that happens, they disobeyed the authority of his word. Yeah. Look at this. Uh, Tinats namin yan ng minsan ng isang kapatiran sa Saudi. Nasa Saudi ito. Nakakachat ko ngayon. Nasa ibang bansa talaga. Sabi ko yung kung minsan hindi natin naintindihan. Kung minsan may, meron tayong gustong gawin that hindi tayo mindful na ang kinukuha natin kung may isang position ay position ng Diyos rather than yung sa ating position lang. Kasi isa sa disobedience ng tao is this one. This is a clear disobedience of man. Ha? Di, naintindihan po ba natin na ang disobedience, ano ba ang disobedience nila Adam and Eve? If I may ask, I mean anyone among the listeners. What is the disobedience that these two individuals uh, did in their life? Pagkain dun sa pinagbabawal po na pikainin ng the tree of the knowledge of oh, the tree. Alam, alam nila yun, di ba? Alam nila na pinagbawal. Well, so, what triggers them to to disobey? What triggers this, these two individuals to Anong position ng kanilang kinuha? To be like God. They want to take the position of God. Mm. They, they, they really wanted to put themselves in the position of God because that was the temptation. That was the temptation of the devil. Sabi niya, if you will eat this fruit, you will not really die. But in fact, you will become like God. Okay? Pero ang clear command of God is this. What is the clear command of God? Do not eat of this forbidden fruit. What kind of fruit is that? Ano ba yung, ano, ano yung kanilang dinisire? The fruit of what? The fruit of knowledge of good and evil. Let me ask you a question. <clears throat> before, before they eat, before they eat, huh? do they know good and evil? Before they eat the fruit, did, do they know good and evil? Not yet. Really? Hindi pa sinabi nga ni God? <laughs> Huwag mong kainin niya kasi prutas siya ng mabuti at masama. Knowing good and evil. So in, in, that, is, in that position, they understand something about what is, what is wrong and what is good. What is right and what is not right. Meron silang understanding. Hindi, hindi ito yung position na wala silang kaalam-alam sa masama. Mm. Mer- alam, alam nila yun na mag- masama yun. Sinabi nga ng Diyos, masama yun. Mm. Uh, meron silang knowledge. Do you know, do we understand clearly why they are taking the position of God? They have intellectually, volitionally, they have an understanding what is good and what is bad. But they do not have an experience to that. Mm. Wala silang wala silang positional experience to know what is good and evil. But intellectually sa kanilang knowledge meron sila. So when they desire to have an experience, how does it really feel to be in this position? That is the fall. Because when you say to eat of the knowledge of good and evil, what that really means is that you are taking the position of God who determines what is good 
and what is evil. Intindihan mm. natin? Bigyan pa ng clear example ito. Halimbawa, gagawa ka ng batas. Halimbawa, ikaw yung authority na gagawa ng batas. Sasabihin mo, itong, ito ang batas ko. Ito, masama ito. Sa aking batas, ito masama. Sa aking batas, ito ang mabuti. Siya yung gumagawa ng batas, siya yung gumagawa ng rule. Siya yung nagdi-determine kung ano ang mabuti sa masama. Hindi lang yung kinain yung, yung prutas, kundi to determine what is good and what is evil. It, it, ito kaya yung sinabi ko kanina, the only absolute authority who can determine good and evil is God. But when man begins to take the position of what is good and evil, that becomes an idolatry. That becomes taking the position of a of the God Himself who only holds the absolute authority to that. Now this one. Kapag ka, sasagutin ko yung tanong mo, how do you apply your sa tanong mo? Yung bang tinitake mong position which is direct contrary sa sinabi na ng Diyos. What do, you, what do you expect that will happen? Kaya ito may isang ganito yung problema natin sa lipunan, eh, di ba? Pagdating, for example lang, sa, sa rule of love, sa rule, sa rule of love, ang bawat tao may kanya-kanya ng definition ng love. Mm. Pero ang tamang definition ng love, yun nasa Biblia. Yung sinabi na ng Diyos, yung, yung, kung ano yung ano sa Diyos, kung ano yung definition niya sa love, yun lang ang love talaga, na legitimate. Sa mundo ngayon, marami ng illegitimate love. Mm. And in the name of that, eh? gumagawa na, kung ang tao, gumagawa na ng kanyang sariling definition na mga bagay na hindi na akmado sa sinabi mismo ng Diyos. Mm. The same thing as pinag-uusapan natin sa sa position mo na for example sa yung personal position you have to determine first and foremost that the position that you are taking is in line dun sa established authority of God kung merong clear kung merong clear word about the position that you are taking is in accordance to that position hindi ka in violation but if you violate that you will be in big trouble kung saan mo binahilate yung position na yun. Huwag kang mag-fall doon sa trap na yun. Kasi you are just doing what Adam and Eve has done. Sim- simple lang, ano, kinain lang. Pero hindi, hindi yun ang issue. Hindi yung pagkain. Ano bang, ano bang magagawa ng isang pruta sa belly? Sinabi sa New Testament, the kingdom of God is not about eating or drinking. This is, we're talking about something deeper than that. Dapat maging klaro sa isip natin that what you are obeying is not contrary to the precepts and statutes of the Word of God. Basta merong clear word. I hope that would bring more clarity sa sin. Sa iniisip mo, Brother Jezreel. Amen po, Pastor. Thank you po. Any, any any other things that you would like to clarify? Well, actually, Pastor, salamat po. Um, that is actually a personal testimony. Mm-hmm. And also, true by us, witness po na God is like, commanding me to be a pastor, go to, uh, go and learn being a pastor. But then, in my own perception, being a, being a son, Ayun po, kasi noon ako magtrabaho and dis- disregarding God's command to me, to visions, to, to Papa John, to uh, many pastors around me. Ayun po, and like, di- dito ko palang naunawaan na uh, I'll be like Adam and Eve if I will not, ayun po, I will not obey God in my own perception na so what uh, you mean is that yung personal uh, query mo is about your personal ministry 
Ayun po, Pastor. Tama po. Yung calling ko po. Sa calling, sa ministry calling. Okay, hey, Pastor. You know what? Uh, personally, uh, personally, this is what just coming from my personal life. Yes. Kasi matagal ako sa ano sa Middle East. Uh, I'm a professional engineer by by career. I've I've worked I've worked in that field for like uh, 30 years. And dumating ako sa crossroad. Uh, it just happened. Uh, it's like God has directed me to a different course when I came to Australia. Pagdating ko dito, wala, akong, wala na akong na-exercise na aking career. It's like the door for my career has ended. Was closed. Totally, totally closed. You know, the, and because dahil Christian na ako nung time na yun, siguro, um, dumating ka ko yung kami rito, 97 eh. I became a Christian in 88. So, ilan years na ako nun. Hindi, hindi pa masyadong matagal. Siguro mga ilan, nine years na Christian? Nine years po. Nine years. Pero pagdating dito, magkaibang magkaiba ang takbo ng buhay, siyempre. Dahil may pamilya ko, eh. may uh, lima yung anak namin, nadagdagan pa, naging anin. Tapos pareho kami walang trabaho. Oo. Oh. And then, na-involve ako sa ministry agad. Tapos hindi pa rin ako makahanap ng trabaho. So, ang tanong, ang tanong sa akin, ako ang nagtanong sa Diyos. Hindi, hindi, hindi na ako yung tinatanong ng Diyos. Ako yung nagtatanong sa Diyos. Sabi ko, ano ba talaga ang plano mo? Bakit hindi ako magkaroon ng trabaho? So, sabi ko naman sa Diyos nung, sabi ko, kung ano yung gusto mo, di siyempre, ilid mo na lang ako kung saan ako dapat pumunta. Yun ang hiningi ko. Hiningi ko yun. So, from there on, hindi na ako nag-isip ng iba. Basta kung ano yung opportunity na binibigay sa akin ng Diyos, yun lang ang nilalakaran ko. So, past trap, uh, that was 97. Ano? So, I became involved into this church. Into this, itong church ngayon. For the first 10 years, nag-serve ako dito sa church na to as a volunteer pastor. Kasi may dating senior pastor kami. Pero after 10 years, akalain mo ba na yung leadership na ito magpupunta sa akin? Ni, ni, ni sa panaginip, hindi nga namin nakikita yun eh. Pero eventually now, it became like, now the church has been, um, alam na, 20, nag 28 years na kami nung ano eh. Last June eh. For... Wow. sa leadership ko ngayon more than the original pastor. But never in my mind na ako magiging lead pastor nito. You know, pagka may calling ka sa Diyos, you know, hindi mo pagsisisiyan yung pagsunod sa Diyos. Ito yung lagi ko sinishare sa mga pastor namin. Eh. Pag sumusunod tayo sa Diyos, hindi mo kailanman pagsisisiyan ang pagsunod mo sa Diyos. Amen. Maniwala ka sa hindi. Ang pagsunod sa Diyos ay hindi pinagsisisihan. Magsisisi tayo pag hindi tayo sumunod sa Diyos. Yun ang totoo. Amen. There is another example. O, nag-lockdown ng ano. Nandiyan ako nung ano eh. Nandiyan ako sa Philippines nung early February hanggang mid-March. Muntik pa ako mapagsara, muntik pa kami mapagsara ni Ma'am Simo na sa air, sa ano, airport dahil nag-lockdown ng Manila. Wow. Nung malapit na kami bumalik. March 15 kami aalis eh. Eh nag-lockdown ng March uh, 12 yata. Three days before. Wow. It just happened na uh, in-invite ako na isang pastor sa Paranaque na doon na kami nag-stay. Eh, siyempre, malapit na sa airport. So, hindi kami kailangan lumabas ng Metro Manila. Wow! <laughs> so, pero galing kami ng ano, galing kami ng Bataan, galing kami ng... 
Nagminist kasi briefly lang kami rin diyan. Pero mula nung bumalik kami rito, lockdown na kami. Hanggang ngayon, ilang buwan na tayo. Ito seven months na. Two doors. Minsan nung unang, nung unang ano, so, minsan tayong mga pastor, ang dami natin inaalala kung minsan na mga bagay na hindi na dapat natin inaalala. <laughs> maraming challenges, bakit hindi? Financially, maraming challenges dahil Diba? Isa, isang apektado dyan yung kasabihin ng iba, uh, paano masusurvive yung church kung wala nang service. Diba? Kaya praise God nga, nakakapag-service pa kayo kami. Wala nga kami yung service na physically <laughs> for the last seven months. Ano na, wala pa nang bumalik ako, wala na kami service. Puro virtual lang eh. Pero hindi na hindi kami nag hindi kami nag-aalala sa mga sa mga nangyayari sa paligid. We just want to move. You know, whatever God leads us, wherever God leads us. Amen. We we'll just do what we do. Amen. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Nakikita ko nga sa mga photos niyo, palagi kayong masaya sa lakaran. <laughs> Sana all <laughs> kami wala, Hindi kami pwedeng mamasyal eh. Walang pasyal walang, Hanggang 5 kilometers lang kami pwedeng umalis Wow 5 kilometers <laughs> Can you imagine 5 kilometers radius lang kami alam niyo, ang, ang pwede kami lumabas lang ganito, kung ikaw pupunta sa grocery, kung pupunta ka sa doktor, kung mag exercise ka dyan sa labas mo lang, dyan sa labas mo lang, ha, sa vicinity mo lang. O di kaya, kung meron kang trabaho na hindi ka pwedeng mag-online. Tsaka, pag nagtrabaho ka, kailangan may permit ka sa company. May, may written permit na nanggaling sa government. Wow. Pag wala ka na, pulihin ka. <laughs> Tapos meron kaming curfew, may curfew kami sa gabi. Start ng 9 p.m. curfew na hanggang 5 a.m. Life is so hard. Curfew na po ngayon. <laughs> oh, curfew na talaga kami. Kanina pa. Praise be to God. Praise the Lord. Well, I hope that we, we, you all have a, a wonderful uh, evening tonight. Amen. Amen. You too, Pastor. And I pray that we, oh. can, yeah, we can continue to connect until uh, until such time. Amen, Paul. And I would like, yeah, I would like to thank uh, Sister Mona again for. Uh, allowing me to share and hopefully na uh, we can see more fruitfulness in true vine. Amen. 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 Um, and hopefully amen. Uh, Yep. Opo, si Daddy po and si Mommy are also here, Pastor, listening. Hi, good evening, Pastor Solomon. Yes, good evening, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blessing, Pastor. Hallelujah. Si Mama po naka-distance kasi may sipon. Pastor. Hindi din po. Uh, Nami-miss na kayo ni Mamzi. <laughs> Palagi nga ako tinatanong ni ano eh ni ni Mrs. kung ano raw plano namin next year? Sabi ko, ang hirap magplano ngayon. Hindi natin alam kung ano. <laughs> Amen. Kung ano palagi. Hindi katulad last year na kapagplano kami in advance. Pero ngayon eh. It's like we are all in stalemate in planning. Amen. Overseas. 
Amen. Yung nga uh, lang aming church sa Brisbane, hindi ko mapasyalan dahil naka-lockdown kami sa ano eh. Ayaw kami papuntahin doon sa Queensland lang yun ha. Wow. We are not yet allowed to <laughs> to local flight. May restriction sa border. And, hindi namin ma- ang plano namin nung galing dyan sa Philippines last March, didiretso kami ng Brisbane. And, kaya lang, unfortunately, nag-lockdown. Until <laughs> ngayon. Until ngayon. <laughs> Nakasuspend yung aming bubuksan na church sa Brisbane. Wow. May bagong gawain po doon. May bagong gawain na sinimulan kami doon eh. eh. Gusto ko mabisita personally. Puro ano lang kami nag, nag ano eh, virtual lang. Virtual, opo. <laughs> Thank you again, Pastor. Grabe po. We are um, honored and blessed to have you tonight po. Amen. So, maybe uh, okay. Papa will be closing po in prayer. And Jezreel and Grayson, Thank you also for joining us and sa iba. Thank you. Okay, Papa. Um, okay, so we go. So we pray, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the night that you have been given to us. Salamat po sa gabing ito. Pinagkaisa mo ang iyo pong uh, manampalatay. Yes. At salamat din po Diyos kay Pastor na nagbigay din po sa amin ng aral. Sa gabi nito, Diyos ay aming tatamasin. Lalong-lalo na po yung aming spiritual na buhay. At lalong-lalo na po Diyos yung salitang submission. Lord, it will be applied oh, to all Christians, especially to those pastors, leaders, that it will be having this uh, submission to, yeah. for giving authority to the authority. Salamat po Diyos sa mensahe, salamat po sa aral na ito, Ama, na nagbibigay din pa rin po sa amin, O Diyos, upang kilalanin po namin ang aming sarili to whom that we will be submitted to the authority. Salamat po Diyos kay Pastor, sa kanyang pamilya, pagpalayan mo sila, yes, yung kanilang gawain, pagpalayan mo din, Ama, na ito po Diyos ay hindi po una, ito ay hindi din po ni, kundi O Diyos yung aming connection po Diyos ay patuloy at pagpapalayan mo ng bawat isa. Lord, may we ask your blessing and to the Nebaisia, to the Vinket, to the Lord, Lord, that this, uh, uh, that this subject, Father, submission to the authority, legitimate submission to the authority, it will be a full blast, Father, to the church, and the church will be, uh, to the church, Ama, ay magkakaroon po ng prosperity. Lord, may we ask a blessing upon us and to all that hear this, uh, this subject, Father, it will be a blast upon their life. Lord, we thank you for this tonight. In Jesus, we ask all these things. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. be to God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Grace, and Israel. Thank you, Grace, and Israel. Thank you, Grace, and Israel.